Ladies and gentlemen, Zen 1 still rocks. Those were the conclusions I came to in my previous video. But the question is, if you were running a 1700X, is it worth upgrading to a 3700X if your primary goal is gaming? Well, as the well title of this video probably implies, I've done some testing and I actually have some rather surprising answers. So if you did miss the previous video, I would encourage you to check it out. I'll of course link it in the video description along with another link to an article of this, if you prefer the written word. But the TLDR is that I was testing the 1700X based of course on the Zen 1 architecture in modern day games such as Cyberpunk, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and basically seeing how well it compares against a 10900K with both stonks speed as well as overclocked. And overall, the chip did fairly well, proving that while minimum frame rates were definitely slower than a 10900K, not surprising, it did pretty decently, especially if you did give it the benefit of faster RAM and some love and care with overclocking and tweaking, proving that the ooh shiny factor is a strong factor, but it's not necessarily the case where you have to upgrade just because a new product is released. If you look at Zen 2 then, the 3700X, which is what I'm using to test here, uh, the 3700X has many similarities. It's still eight cores, 16 threads, which, you know, in my opinion, is the sweet spot for games. I think six cores, six, uh, sorry, six cores, 12 threads, or eight cores, 16 threads, is the sweet spot for games and will continue to be for a couple of years at least, especially given the next generation consoles are uh, native eight cores, 16 threads. But, the real difference lies in the architecture. Much better branch prediction, a whole litany of changes across the core, and the other big one is the L3 cache. Not to mention the chiplet design of Zen 2, but that doesn't really apply for the 3700X because it's only eight core 16 threads compared to something like a 50, uh, sorry, a 3900 or a 3950 CPU. While Zen 3 based processors, aka Ryzen 5000, are technically available, they are incredibly difficult to procure at the moment, especially higher core count CPUs. But the real benefit of uh, Zen 2, for us anyway, is that a 300 series board is super easy to uh, upgrade to a Zen 2 based CPU. You basically just update the BIOS and throw the next CPU in. I did exactly that for this system, which is an X370 Prime motherboard from Asus. Uh, the configuration of this is exactly the same as my previous video, with the exception, of course, being the CPU. So basically, I ripped out the AIO and, um, yeah, just basically threw in the 3700X and, of course, used the incorrect amount of thermal paste, whatever you believe. I used the complete opposite, believe me. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, it's still using an RTX 3070. And I'm also using the Crucial Ballistics memory from previously. The only difference here is that it's running at 3200 megahertz rather than 2933, um, which was the maximum I could get out of my Zen 1 base chip. I know that 3200 is not the fastest for Zen 2, but it's kind of like if you have 3600 megahertz memory lying around, I don't think you would have paired that with a Zen 1 base CPU and I'm trying to do the kind of like a drop-in thing. So yeah, that was my thought behind that. I'm sure uh, there is arguments either way, but yeah, so it's 3200 megahertz RAM and um, I think uh, we're pretty good to go. Right, so let's look at the results then. Let's see how our 3700X fares against the 1700X. I've also decided to do something a bit different and test two older games too, Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as Batman Arkham Knight, starting with Rise, which was a game which did rather terribly actually, on launch for Zen 1. I thought it'd be interesting to go back to this and see what happens now. There were patches from Microsoft for Windows CPU scheduling, AMD themselves also released various BIOS updates, and the developers also put out patches for Rise of the Tomb Raider. I covered this rather extensively back in the day and there was a pretty massive jump actually from uh, the initial release of Zen to um, a couple of weeks afterwards. I don't remember the exact time frame because it was over three years ago now, which is kind of scary. But anyway, uh, getting back to the topic here, Zen 2, we get a 30-ish FPS gain at 1080p, but 
well, the RTX 3070 is still limiting things at 1440p. And Batman Arkham Knight, much the same could be said. At release, this game was not exactly the best optimized for PCs, especially if you happen to be running this on a slower mechanical drive with uh, not too much RAM. It was not a good experience, but Batman Arkham Knight now, after some developer patches, also benefiting too, of course, from uh, much faster hardware. It's actually a really nice experience, and I'd encourage you to check it out if you missed it back then. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn, a game which has done really well on Intel CPUs and still actually does continue to do well on Intel CPUs. Zen 2 offers a sizable advantage here. Uh, frame rates go up significantly on the 3700X. Uh, the 1700X didn't even hit 60 FPS um, minimum in our benchmarks and so of course that definitely does impact playability. So the 3700X is much faster here. And also Gears 5, I want to discuss this verbally. So there's about a 20% performance leap with Zen, uh, going from Zen 1 to Zen 2, but um, I've had to manually tweak the graphics options here. Gears 5 actually had a uh, update recently, which included the Hive Busters DLC, but also added several new GPU features too. Um, and they are very punishing to the game, and honestly, I just didn't think it was worth retesting on my 1700X footage, uh, sorry, uh, results, because it does mostly impact the uh, GPU, so I've basically just disabled those for the um, uh, Zen 2 tests here. Right, let's draw some conclusions. What have we learned? Well, first of all, AMD have given us a massive, tangible upgrade from Zen 1 to Zen 2. Technically, we are skipping a generation with Zen Plus. However, it was kind of an interim upgrade and nothing huge of note. I did test it back in the day. About 3% IPC gains at the same clock frequency. Nothing compared to what we're seeing here, of course, with Zen 2. But it's a very easy upgrade. Again, you just simply plonk it in to your motherboard, assuming you could upgrade the BIOS, and almost all decent motherboards allow you to upgrade the BIOS, MSI, ASUS, and so on and so on. But is it worth it for you? Well, it really comes down to your situation. As I mentioned earlier, the ooh shiny factor is a compelling factor, but it doesn't necessarily dictate if you should upgrade. If you're running this, uh, CPU of 3700X with an older card such as an RX 570 and expecting higher frame rates at 1440p, well, it's not really going to happen. Minimum frame rates might go up a little, but is it worth it? Mm, well, kind of depends on you. If you have a more sizable GPU such as a GTX 1080 Ti, an RX 5700 XT, or are planning an upgrade to something like an RTX 3060 Ti, I've done reviews of the 3060 Ti which I'll link in the video description, as well as the 3070, then yeah, I can definitely see this being more of benefit. As I discussed in my previous video, the 1700X and other Zen 1 based CPUs also really does rely on fast memory clock frequencies and the same thing of course could be said for Ryzen 3000. So if you are running slow memory with your Zen 1 based rig then you're not going to get much of a, a performance you know jump anyway moving to Zen 2. If you're trying to pair this with like 2133 megahertz for example I've got bad news for you. So if you're in this situation where well okay I need to buy faster memory I need to buy the CPU and I also need to buy a new GPU as well. At that point, you're essentially looking at an entire new platform. So I personally would maybe just wait and get a like 5600X or a like 5800X, depending what goes on in prices in a couple of months. But I am thinking of this for the future. That's right, I'm doing this for future generations. 
Um, we don't know how prices are going to change over the next, you know, 6, 12 months. And while shortages are a pain in the ass right now, in 6 or 12 months I have a feeling that stock is just going to be overflowing for Zen 3. And most likely people will also be selling off their Zen 2 based systems too. Because of that, you might be able to get a really good cheap upgrade from something um, like eBay or Craigslist, or maybe even your friend just gives it to you. So in those cases, I can definitely see a lot of advantages. This video also didn't cover many of the tweaks that you can implement for Zen 2. And if you do use those, you can get a lot more power out of the CPU, a lot more performance out of the CPU. But I wanted this to represent kind of like a drop in uh, a drop in performance, what I suspect most people will do, because there are a fraction of people who will really optimize their systems, go in, manually te uh, tweak memory timings and all that stuff, but most people don't do that. They just, you know, enable XMP or DOCP or whatever you want to call it, you know, and that's it. So I wanted this to represent that as much as possible. And um, I, of course, will leave it down to you whether you think it's worth the, uh, the cash to upgrade your system. Again, the fact that it's so easy is definitely very tantalizing. The performance uplift is huge for Zen 2. But is it worth it? Really comes down to the rest of your components and budget as always. Anyway, I think that just about covers it for this video. If you have enjoyed it, then check, of course, the article, which is linked in the video description, and also consider subscribing to the channel. It's the best way you can support us, and definitely consider clicking the bell icon too, as YouTube has a tenuous relationship at best with notifications, so the bell icon does help there. You know, occasionally pass one another in the street and they kind of give each other the wink but um, nothing really happens they just flirt occasionally with notifications so that does help a lot and of course like and comment as well uh, depending on you know let me know whether you're considering an upgrade or whether you're just happy with your zen one or whatever based system with that said thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves bye for now